Besides that, the it will also help in the economic growth when there is more and more uh, technology has been invented. Okay, all right, good. Uh, class, after I ask in your question, I'm a bit worried about you all. Okay, because this is it will hundred percent coursework. I know that you got time. You can refer. You can you can you can discuss or whatever to do the coursework. But this in for this paper, forty percent of the final marks is coming from exam. If based on what you are based on your answer that you gave me just now, I really worry whether you can pass the exam or not. What should we do? Let's discuss together. What should we do in order for you to to understand the lecture? I'm thinking of shall we every lecture before we start the lecture for that day we go we go through the previous lecture briefly just a quick revisions of the previous lecture do you think this one help yes who who is saying who is speaking you remember during the first lecture i think not uh not this paper but the entrepreneurship i show you the four category of learning isn't it the last the, the lowest category is i don't know what i don't know this is the worst case so now i'm asking you in what way that can help you to have a better understanding on this paper so don't if you keep quiet that's when you don't know what you don't know then how am i going to help you up come on let's brainstorm any idea? After lecture, do you do you go do you do you really listen to the recording or read the lecture notes or not? Only okay, sometimes, okay. How about others? Victor, there's no no uh, not reading. So when are you going to read the lecture notes? If I don't give you, you say you cannot answer the question, but when I give you, you don't read. So when are you going to read the lecture notes? Victor? When you are pressed to, uh, that's when I, I need to give you a, a, a pressure, then only you, you will read the, the lecture notes, is it? Well, it's me, every, every week I give you a test, uh, then only you, you, you all will start to read. Uh, Brenda say what? Have more brainstorm section together and sir list down the acceptable point and idea given by student in the slide. Okay, what? Uh, Brenda, can you speak out? Can, is is your mic okay? Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I I I cannot understand what you mean, uh. Can you like uh talk up, speak it up? Uh, what I suggest is that every week there's a different there's different type of question given, right? Yes, right. Then uh, after the student give their uh, opinion on the point, mm -hmm. then maybe you can list down the acceptable point or unacceptable point, then let the student of other tutorial group to have a look on that. Okay. I did tell you all when your classmate is presenting or whatever, if any point that is not listed in your list, please record it down. So this one, did you all do it? Yes. So, okay, right, I take a point. Your brainstorming is referring to the tutorial or lecture? Both, uh, I think. Uh, sorry? Both, I think. Both, you think, okay. So in tutorial, because now I'm, 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 my concern is the way you write, whether you can write a proper answer or not. That's why every tutorial I ask you to discuss with your own self and then write down the answer. But do you think this one is, is better or form you into a group and then you all discuss the answer? Which one is you can learn faster? Chia saying him, prefer hard copy more than e-notes, then you can print out lah. Now it's under MCO, I also cannot give you a hard copy. The only way is to print out the hard copy. Okay, brainstorming is better or do your individual assignment is better? Uh, 
which one do you absorb? Uh, uh, it's better for you to absorb. Come on, class. We have 61 of you here. Now I'm asking how, how can I, I am finding way, how can I help you up? Individual waste time, haha. Uh, why you say it's waste time, uh, Brenda? Uh, because need more time to prepare the, the answer. Okay. But if we without the writing exercise, do you think you can write well in the exam? If we go back like what we have done for the entrepreneurship, do you think it's better for you? Singhing say either one is fine for me, okay? So you have to let me know your, your learning behavior, otherwise I I, I I go on my way, then you may you may not be able to learn. I'm trying to find ways to help you out. I don't think it is a decisions yet, but it just brainstorming. I, 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 I just want to know, is there any other, other method or not that you are familiar or that you, you think that is good for you? Any idea? Okay, let you think about it. If you have any idea, you can text me, message me, or tell me during the class, okay? All right. Uh, Jun Wing providing a, a sample answer to tutorial question. We, basically, the answer for the tutorial are different for each individual. There is no standardized answer there. So if you pay attention to the uh, when your, your classmate is presenting and when I give a comment, then you should be able to grab it, okay? I do not provide sample for tutorial answer. That is because I find out many students, they are copying without understanding, okay? So if you, they, they just memorize the answer. If the exam question come out twist a little bit, then they cannot answer. Or I face even the worst scenario is, my lecture notes is having a, a typo error, okay? During the exam and assignment, the student just memorizing it bullet bullet and then write down the same error that I have made. I, I have a typing a typo error. The typo error appear in the answer script of the exam as well as in the uh, assignment. So this show that you're just copy it without understanding. This is not what I want to see, okay? Okay, uh, Chang Junming. Junming. Okay, right, okay, now let's start our lecture. So you all think about how are you going to uh, study this paper? How am I, what are the, what are the things that I can, I, I can do to help you out? Okay, so today we are going to talk about uh, technology transfer. Let me project my screen first. Huh? Can you see my screen? Can you yes, see sir. my screen? Now? Okay. Now, where is my pointer? Okay. We are talking about technology transfer. Basically, technology transfer means one country, uh, they have developed a new technology or whatever, they have used it or whatever. Then after that, another country which do not know about this technology, they will ask this country to transfer the technology over to their country. Okay, usually it's a de developing country or third world country transfer the technology from, one, uh, from developed country like US or UK, okay? Definitely during the transactions, the, 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 there must be beneficial to both party. The recipient country may, may need to pay loyalty or whatever or some, some amount of money to the, uh, the, the developed country. Okay, so basically this is talking about technology transfer. Okay, social trend and technological advancement. There are, there are three phases. The first phase is of in the, in industrialization is labor intensive industry. For example, just before, just after, immediately after the steam engine was developed, 
There are a lot of factory being set up. So a lot of work, there is no machine yet, so it's labor intensive. Okay, so the first phase is labor intensive. We need to depend on the laborer. There are low level of technology. Then after that, when the machine is uh, developed, then scale intensive industry, where higher scale of human input makes up of lower number of workers. We have less worker already. But the, 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 the one who work in the uh, industry need to have higher skill. Okay, so the, and the second phase is higher efficiency, lower cost, more efficient wealth creations. This is second phase. The third phase is service-based industry where superior knowledge is used to boost wealth and creating wealth. Okay, so it is a knowledge economy as what we are uh, as what we are having now. It is a uh, K economy or knowledge economy. Now technology again. This is another definitions, but this definition is used by UNIDO. UNIDO is a United Nation. Uh, industrial development organizations, yeah, United Nations Industrial Development Organizations define technology as a system of knowledge, techniques, skill, expertise, and organization used to produce, commercialize, and utilize goods and services that satisfy economy and social demands. Okay, here he mentioned about two things: is technology must be able to satisfy economy and also social demands, okay? And it is a use of a knowledge, technique, skill, expertise, and so on and so forth. So this is the definition that uh, UNIDO is given. Then technology transfer can be in the transfer of any of the above. Technology transfer, it can be transfer of knowledge, transfer of technique, transfer of skill, transfer of expertise, and so forth, okay? Uh, technology transfer can be in the transfer of any of the above. Or their combinations, or in, or if we are not transferring the knowledge alone, you may transfer knowledge and technique together. Okay. For example, if let's say we don't have injection molding in Malaysia, you know what is injection molding? Material student, you should know what is injection molding, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, can you help me to explain what is injection molding? Who is speaking just now? Uh, injection molding is a machine. Uh, shija. Shija. Uh, shija, okay. Can you please explain what is mm. injection molding to those who don't know uh, what is injection, injection molding? Injection molding is a machine that uh, when you put the resin into the machine, uh, then the machine will melt, melt, melt the resin and then uh, the liquid resin will be uh, inject into a mold and then uh, after the the uh, resin is solidified and then the uh, product will come out from the machine. Yeah. Okay, Something good. Like Thank that. you. Basically, injection molding is a machine that used to melt and mold the plastic product. Okay. When you put in the resin, as mentioned by Sijia, it is a pellet that is a raw material we call resin. Okay, you put it inside there, that in the, the in the machine there is a screw, and then heat up the, the barrel, the barrel is heated up. So when the plastic is being heated up, it's melt. When the when it's molten, then the screw turn and then you push the molten uh, resin or molten plastic or inject it into the mold. So when the mold is cooled down, then the plastic will solidify, then you get your products. Okay. So if let's say in Malaysia we don't have this industrial molding uh, technology, so you may want to import it from UK or US. So you are not only importing the knowledge of industrial molding. You may also import the uh, techniques how to run the injection molding and also the machine itself. Okay, so the, the technology transfer is not only referring to one of the items of listed down here. It can be a combination of items that you are transferring. Okay, so technology transfer can be embodied in the equipment supply. Yeah, the, the, the technology can be embedded in the equipment that supply. For example, injection molding. Transfer of expertise, they teach you how to run the, 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 the machine, how to they are how to do the troubleshooting on the machine and so forth, training and software also. All this can be a technology transfer. Mode of technology transfer. Okay, how, how are we going to transfer the technology? The first one is import of foreign high technology products to replace local low technology goods okay, or products. That means you go and import the high technology products from overseas. 
to replace the the the, the product that is uh, producing using low technology in Malaysia. Okay, for example, a CNC machine. Mechanical guys should know what a CNC machine is, isn't it? Right. So you import Malaysia. Uh, we without the CNC machine, we are using a very primitive way to to uh, to make our products. So we import the technology. We import the CNC machine from overseas, from US or UK. Okay. Then the second way is joint venture. That's when we join, we have a partnership with the local and foreign uh, companies. Usually the local company, we, our technology is lower. So we partner with uh, another foreign company in overseas that is having higher technology. Okay, so this is joint venture. For example, Proton. Now Proton is partnered up with the company in, in, in China, isn't it? Right? So they are, they, they, they are transferring their technology over to our Proton car. Okay, outright purchase of high technology process that's building of nuclear power generation plant and whatever that is you directly you purchase the high tech uh, processes or product directly purchase. For example, is uh, we purchase we get the expertise from overseas to build us a nuclear power generation plant. Okay, the fourth one is technological transfer to individual through training in the country and industry. The third fourth one means. You, you hire a, a coach or, or, or instructor or whatever, come over here to Malaysia to, to train your employees, okay? So this one is uh, transferred to individual through training in country yeah? or, in, in, or in industry. So these are the four modes where the technology can be transferred, yeah? Okay, a technology transfer, a transaction or a process through which technological know-how is transferred normally between business or agency representing business. Individual usually we don't transfer our knowledge because it is very costly. Usually the one that uh, go for technology transfer is a business entity or company or government. Okay, so that's why I say the transaction or process through which technological know-how is transferred normally between businesses or agency representing business. Agency here can be a government agency they're representing the, the, the economy sector, yeah? It takes place because both party, uh, the, there are two parties, one is supplier, the, the developed country, and then one acquirer, the developing country, also perceive gain from the transfer. So that means both parties also gaining, also benefit from the technology transfer, okay? This is a win-win situation, yeah? If let's say only the supplier is gaining the, 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 the profit or benefit, the acquirer or the recipient does not receive any benefit. Do you think there will be anyone want to transfer the technology? They don't want because after transfer the technology, then they doesn't gain anything, right? Vice versa, if let's say the, the acquirer or the recipient uh, gain the know-how, gain the knowledge, but there is no benefit to the supplier or developed country, who want to supply you, right? This is just like a, a trading a sell and who want to sell, who want to buy. Okay, you must benefit for both sides. It must have a beneficial to the supplier and also acquirer. Then business model is used because without a vessel or container, technology cannot be transferred. You must have a business model in place how to, how to transfer technology. Also an issue at macro level in negotiations between developed and developing country, especially in trade liberalizations and protections of the environment. Okay, and in technology transfer, when you're involved in the macro level, uh, that's mean at the government level, right? You are you are you are you are, you are discussing between government and government. You are talking about li uh, trade liberalizations and protections the environment. All these factors need to be taken into consideration. Yeah. Okay. Now we, let's talk about the uh, research and development. Let's say now we want to develop a new product. Okay. So generally there are two ways. One is a vertical transfer or vertical. Uh, I don't talk about technology transfer first. I just talk about R and D first. Yeah, uh, research and development. If, the, if we are following the vertical, uh, vertical way, vertical research and development, that's when you need to set up a research and development party uh, department. In your department, you hire a researcher or graduate or whoever to do a research. And after you do the research, then you develop it into the products. Then after that, you go to production side and let the production run, see whether it's okay or not. If the production run it successfully, you can market it. If your production run it uh, facing a lot of problem, you may need to go back to the research area or development uh, stage, redo it again, 
so that your production can run. So this is vertical, okay? And horizontal is operational environment one developed country. The developed country has done all these things. The developed country has done the vertical R and D. Have done all these things, okay? And you just get their fruits, get their outcome, transfer to operation environment two developing country, okay? In other words, if you are following the horizontal transfer, horizontal R and D, you save the time for doing this vertical transfer or vertical R and D. You directly get the outcome from the and what the developed country transfer to your country, okay? So the same thing as technology transfer. You want to come if you want to come up with a new technology from zero from scratch, you need to come up. You need to go through research, development, productions. So it may take years for you to come up with a new technology, right? So but if you are following the horizontal transfer, you just get the whatever technology that is the uh, available or at the developed country, you just transfer it to your country, okay? So you save your time already. You don't need to spend years and years for research. You just transfer them over to your country. So this is a technology transfer, one of the advantage, yeah? It saves time. Technical advantages of a technology transfer can be found in a production process or part of it, which improve production efficiency, reduce cost, improve quality control, and or reduce environmental pollutions. Okay, when you transfer a technology, it may give you a benefit such as mentioned here, uh, better improve quality control, if, uh, improve efficiency, reduce pollution, and so forth. Or you transfer a product which is of better quality than what you are what you are producing now, has a greater functionality, better appearance less damaging to the environment in its use, okay? Or a combination of process and uh, product as a production of a better product require a chain of technology, okay? So these are the advantages of technology transfer. Provided your products that you, you produce are not as high quality as the one that you transfer from overseas, okay? If your product is having a very high quality, there is no point for you to have a technology transfer. Okay, the, 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 major, the major aim of a technology transfer is to want to improve your operations or improve the quality of your products or functionality of your products, okay? So in that case, that means the, uh, the developed country's technology must be able to produce a better product than what you are doing now. Okay, up to here, any question? Can follow or not? Hello, class. You got 60 over of you. Well, nobody can, all, all the 60 over might all oh, having problem. Ah. Yes, Nothing sir. Is, eh? Right? Can you understand or not? Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, when we say yes, sir, or no, sir, I can't understand. It's not so difficult, isn't it? Right? It's only how many? Cannot understand. Three words only. Cannot understand. Yes, sir. Two words only. Why so difficult for you to open your mouth? Okay, let's continue. Categories of industrial technology. What are the, uh, the technologies that we can uh, transfer? Or what are the category of the technology in the industry that we, we would like to transfer? The first one is technology for the production of goods, the dynamic manufacturing, okay? The manufacturing technology of a product. Technology that enhance the properties, features, or quality of a product. As I mentioned just now, after you transfer the technology, your product maybe become better in quality, okay? Once, it, once your product is better in quality, the cost could be lower. And do you know about the cost of quality or not? If a product is a very high quality, the cost is high or low? High. Depends. Hi, why it is high? Mm, uh, because you need a higher quality of the raw materials. Okay, that means they buy more expensive, high quality material uh, to produce their product, is it? Yes. Okay. Other other, other people? Uh, who, are, who, who, who are you? Uh, Xin Shijia. Uh, okay, thank you, Shijia. Okay, how about Sokling? Uh, 
Ah uh, yes. So is it a high quality product? Is it always very expensive? Ah uh, yes, I think. I think higher quality product they will give they will they will sell in higher cost because okay. they need. They need what? They need uh higher quality raw materials, as mentioned, Shijia, and mm. they need uh some high some higher technology to produce their product. Okay, all right. Uh, a higher product is always having higher cost. This is a myth. Uh, this is a misconception that generally we have. Okay. There is no right or wrong. Yes, there are certain products with a high quality, the cost is very high. But there are also where a lot of high quality products where the cost is very low. Looking at the uh, Japanese product, is Japanese car more expensive or continental car more expensive? The car from Europe is more expensive or the car from Japan is more expensive? Which one? Jiahao, Li Jiahao. Li are you there? I think I call you for a second time already, right? Okay, Hui An. Tan Hui An. Yeah. Yeah, which one, which car is more expensive? Continental car, the car from Europe or the car from Japan, manufactured in Japan. Which one is more expensive? Uh, I think it's Europe. S sorry, I can't hear you. I think it's Europe. Europe one is more expensive, okay. Is Japanese car good, good in quality? Yes. Yes, okay. So now, the Japanese product usually are very high in quality and their price is very low. You look at your printer, your, your Canon printer or whatever, it is so cheap, right? But then, the quality is it is acceptable quality or even very high quality, okay. So in Japanese is one of the country that can produce high quality products with low cost, okay. Where why 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 the cost can be so low? We are using a high quality raw material. The cost is high, but don't forget, if your process control is no good, there is a lot of reject, reject causing you to lose money. Right, so indirectly the cost of quality is high. So when the cost of quality is high, that means uh, the, the product price that you have to sell is also high. Okay, but if your production control is very good, your quality control is very good, then you have less reject. When you have a less reject, that means your, your your production loss is lower. So in other words, you 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 are, you are able to lower down your products of uh, price. Do you get me? Just share with you one example. This is a uh, this is a real example. There in Malaysia, there is one rubber manufacturing line. Okay, extrusions, and uh, the the extrusion system is developed by the local people. Okay, and the company is belong to the Japanese company. And the technology is Malaysia uh, Malaysia technology lah, basically because it's developed by Malaysia. Okay. And during the productions, the the, the Malaysia uh, production line got how many people? Got one supervisor, two assistant supervisor, four operator to run the to, to run the the, the, the extrusion line. So altogether, how many? Three plus four, seven. Seven people running a production line. Okay, but when the, their mother's company is in Japan, is a Japanese company. When they come to Malaysia and then they find out that this technology is very good. So they import the technology, they transfer the technology from Malaysia back to Japan. Yeah, this is different from what I say just now. Huh? Just now what I say is we transfer technology from developed country to developing country. Now it's the other way around. They, uh, they transfer technology from developing country to developed country. So they, they transfer the whole product, the uh, whole production line, the extrusion line to Japan. And do you know how many people taking care of that line? Malaysia, we have seven people to take care of the, the production line while, while it is running. In Japan, how many how many people that are they using to run the line? How can you have a guess? How can you? I think one person. One person, okay. How about uh 
，拆啊修边，拆修边，修边啊修边，啊修边，修边拆。我哋政府嗰啲边度嚟嘅？嗯、um, ，I think one or two. Yes, only two person. Okay, in Malaysia we need seven person to run the production line, and in Japan they only need two person to run the production line. So in in Malaysia that's why we need to pay set the the salary for seven people, but in Japan they pay only two salary of two two workers only. So indirectly the production cost also lower. But having said that, what what is the factor that causing their their line can only run by two person instead of a seven person in Malaysia? What do you think? What is the reason behind that? Brenda, what do you think? Uh, because of their higher technology. No technology. I say it transfer from Malaysia, ma. So the technology Because same they, are, they are personnel or worker have higher knowledge on handling the transfer technology. Okay, one of the point. Okay, what else? In this case, the knowledge I would say is secondary. There is one prim primary uh factor that causing it, causing Japanese to have a lower production cost. Because the labor cost in Japan is very high, you know, so every factory also try to cut down the labor, the number of employee because the labor cost is too high. Now, um, uh, Hai Liang, Hai Liang, what do you think? Uh, yes, so I think uh, because Japanese have the uh, automation in their in their industry. Uh, that technology is transferred from Malaysia. Or if if they have automation, then Malaysia also have automation. No, so people is more efficient. Uh, they pay uh hundred of uh hundred percent of the. They pay hundred percent to complete their things. Uh, can you explain again? What do you mean by they pay hundred percent? Hundred percent of effort. Hmm. Okay, good. The yeah, major. Okay, okay. As we know, Japanese. Sorry, what is that? As we know, Japanese are very hardworking in their work, and their their attitude is very good. Mm hmm. Hmm. That's why the uh the the efficiency is high. Okay, good. Yes, the efficiency of the Japanese is very high because they are we do mainly is due to their attitude, not not due to their their knowledge or whatever. Do you know about the internal and external customer? Do you know what is internal customer? Let's say your customer in their own company. Sorry, what is that? Uh, internal customer is customer in their own between their own uh, country. Is it? Uh mm huh. -hmm. external external customer. Uh. The, Overseas customers. Uh, okay, not. Uh, sorry, the answer is not correct. Anyone want to try? What is internal customer and external customer? Hmm. My guess is the Any internal day? is the within. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come. The internal customer is the customer which having the same field with what they do, what the company do. Whereas external company is outside the field they do. Yeah. Okay. The internal, let's say a process, a manufacturing process, okay, is take uh, let's say extrusion. Uh, I, I, I don't know extrusion uh, because some of you don't know what extrusion. Just imagine a simple process. They have three step, okay. Step one handled by person A. Step two handled by person B. Step three handled by person C. Okay. The external customer is the customer who buy your products, your ready mix product. Buy it from. Convenience store or supermarket or or wholesaler or whatever that is called external external customer. Now internal customer is, let's say your 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 process is process A. Okay, first process after you produce a semi finished product, you handle it. You 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 pass this semi finished product to, uh, process B. Okay, so the person handling process B is your internal customer. 
the person B is an internal customer of process A. Do you get me? Yes, sir. Am I confusing you? Can you understand or not? Yes, it's the external is the new product. Very soft, huh? Can you speak louder? The external customer is the end user of the product. Well, the yes. internal customer is the customer that fall within the process of the product development of product. Yes, life. yes. It's same as an operator or worker that fall in the in the in the same 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 production line. Okay, but in Japan, big in, in in Japan, the Japanese has this type of attitude. Say, let's say I'm do I I'm I'm at the process one. And then I pass the semi finished product to uh, process two. If the semi finished product is faulty or any defect, it is my responsibility. They take the whole whole responsibility for it. Okay. For then in that case, person A is responsible for the quality of the product of uh, process B. Okay. So because of their attitude of this one, so the way they work is very good. Okay. They taking care of every single details. To ensure that the products or the parts that they produce by them are in good quality, okay. Whereas in our country, generally, if let's say we have three process A, B, C, when process C is having a, a product being rejected, what is a person C doing? Pointing finger to A and B, right? We 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 are accusing other people causing the problem. We forget about about the, the fact that when we are accusing other people, one, one finger pointing to others, three fingers are pointing to our own self, right? So because of that attitude, then Japanese, the, the, when they run the extrusion production line, they only two person taking care of the whole line. So whereas in Malaysia, we need five to seven person. Okay, so there is a save of five person's salary. Okay, have you heard about Kaizen? How many no. of, uh, have you heard about Kaizen before? Nobody no. heard about Kaizen before. No. Kaizen in Mandarin is uh, Samuel, have you heard about Kaizen before? Samuel? Samuel Raj, are you there? Yong Sim? Nim Yong Sim? Yes. Yes. Have you heard about Kaizen before? Nope, never. Never. Who has heard about Kaizen before? The concept of Kaizen also makes Japan stand out from other countries. Uh, for those who don't know Mandarin Chinese, uh, I'm sorry, you, you may ask your friend to translate for you. The Kaizen in the Japanese writing is exactly as same as the Chinese writing Kaisan. Do you all know Kaisan? Kaipian de Kai. San si de San. Kaisan. Okay, that's mean make improvement. So Japan, they have this sort of concept that every day I make one small improvement. Okay, so after one year, I will have a big, big improvement uh, being done. Whereas in the Western country, they do not have this Kaizen. So they, what they are expecting, the, the, the improvement is a leapfrog. Okay, it, it is a big jump of uh, improvement. They don't, they don't look at the daily improvement. But whereas in Japanese, they look at the daily improvement. Every day, improve a little bit. Then after one month or one year, you have a very huge improvement already. So this is basically is the difference between the West and the East. Okay, and now the, the, the technology that enhances the property, features, and quality of a product is, uh, is something that we can transfer, yeah? And then technologies that produce one or more special effect, or if you, 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 if you have a product already, but it can only have one features, then you want to make, make your product to have more special effect or whatever, then you also can uh, transfer the technologies. Then technologies that modify a production process or manufacturing system to bring about some advantage of, of, of leverage. Yeah? Technologies for the production of technical services. This is also can be uh, transferred. Benefit of technology transfer. Now, 
when you look at this title, please be careful. Uh, in the benefit for technology transfer, it can be from the acquire our recipient perspective, it can be from the provider's perspective. Okay, if in the exam or whatever, you look clearly whether it's talking about acquire recipient or provider, okay, or it's talking about the developing country or developed country. Okay, so you need to differentiate it. Uh. So benefit for our technology transfer to a developing country or recipient is lower cost and better product in short time. Why? Because just now you remember we're talking about vertical R&D, vertical transfer and horizontal transfer. Uh, if you transfer the technology, you don't need to go through the horizontal, uh, you don't need to go through the vertical transfer. So it saves your time, okay? So in short terms, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, you can get uh, better products with lower cost because the R&D is very costly, right? For example, like now the, the COVID-19, those, those, those uh, industries those industry doing the R&D one, they have spent a lot of money in, uh, to invent or to, 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 to manufacture the vaccine, right? But after the technology is established, some other company just buy over the technology, so they save a lot of time and cost, right? So this is a lower cost and uh, better and better products. And then development of technological capability, including ability to innovate depending on the effectiveness of learning. So after you transfer the technology to you, you are learning a new, new knowledge, right? And when you learn a new knowledge, you may able to modify your new knowledge to, become, to, to, to innovate or to build some other machine, okay? Make use of the knowledge that you gain from the technology transfer and develop something new, okay? So this is a benefit to the uh, recipients, you have to be innovative. You see, in today's world, most of the pro product is an innovative product or invented product. Innovative, I guess. Yes, it is innovative. We are combining different different products together into become one product. We are very innovative. For example, like the handphone, we are combining the uh, the, the cell phone, the, the telephone itself with the camera, right? And also with the Wi-Fi. So in three in one, so the, the what you say, the, the the handphone now is very innovative. They, they have many functions, okay? But if you are talking about invention, that's when you start from zero, you invent something out, okay? So innovative is you, you take whatever exists in, in the world now and then you combine or you separate them together, okay? This is uh, innovations. So in the most of the new products are very innovative, yeah? And also to improve environmental soundness for better competitiveness. Definitely, when you just how we say that we tra we transfer the technology, in which may make our products better quality, lower cost, and so forth. So when your products is better quality and lower cost, your competitiveness will be better. It's easier for you to compete with other people, right? So these are the benefits of the recipient of technology transfer. Now we know that Korean is a uh, very high, very good in in, in this uh, science and technology, isn't it? Same as Japan, right? The Korean product now is very good. But before they, uh, they, they, reach that, the, the, they reach this stage, they also gone through a many uh, technology transfer, okay? For example, in 1950, they are technology transfer on the cultural aspect, okay? Because they are, they are, they are depending on the labor. So they are transferring the technology that using the machine or whatever. And, and then in the... Uh, 1990s, they start to transfer the high-tech industry into their countries, okay? And then the, 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 their core workers are engineers and scientists already. And then this one make their technology growing, yeah? So you see, most of the country, like Japan, Korea, now who is a developed country, last time before, when before they are developed, they are also transferring the technology uh, over to their country. Okay. Progressions of technological capabilities. Knowledge and skill required for the processing of productions where shop floor experience and learning by doing play and by doing play and important roles. Your knowledge and skill required for the processing is very, very important. You must have the knowledge. Okay, if you don't have the knowledge, then even the machine or the technology is there. You don't know how to use it. You don't know how to troubleshoot it. Like just now the assumption uh, case uh, that I mentioned in Japan, one of you saying that the Japanese uh, people are more knowledgeable. Yes, because they are, they are knowledgeable, so they can handle the machine on their own. Okay, Knowledge and skill required for investment 
let's establish a new production facility and the expansion or modernization or assist or assisting one. Beside the technical know-how, you also need to have knowledge in the uh, investment. Whether is it worth it to to establish a new production line or not? Whether you want to invest your money and time to expand your production lines or to modernize your production line or not? Okay. Third one, adaptive engineering or an or an organizational adaptation required for the continuous and incremental upgrading of product design, performance features, and process technology. Now, after you have uh, transferred technology, you are, you shouldn't stop there. If you stop there, then your technology is ten years later. Your technology is become old technology already, right? So you need to adapt it and then do the modification and have a continuous and incremental uh, upgrading of your product design. Uh, or, or in 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 the in the word Japanese called kaizen. Okay, after you 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 transfer the technology to your side, you know that you got the know how, you got the knowledge, you got the component, you got the equipment already, you got the you got the machine. Then you can do the uh, kaizen. Every every day you just improve a little bit, or every month you just improve a little bit. Then after one year or so, then your your you see that your your product design or performance features everything are improved. Okay. For your information, the author of the, this book called Kaizen, the author they mentioned that he has uh, he had visited the uh, a factory in the UK. Uh, may I cannot remember how many years. If I know, basically it's around twenty years ago, right? And then he revisited the factory again. And you know what was his comment? His comment was that the factory looked the same, not much difference. Does it twenty years back and twenty years now? The factory not much improvement, not 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 much uh, changes, and he said that this thing will never happen in the industry in Japan, because Japan is practicing kaizen. So if ten years ah uh, twenty years ago you visited the Japanese factory and twenty years later you visit the Japanese factory again, you will see that there's a lot of changes happening in the factory in the shop floor. Okay, so this is a continuous and incremental upgrading, be it a process or be it a product. Okay, and then the knowledge required for product and process innovation and the creation of new technology in some manufacturing. Okay, so you also uh, uh gain the knowledge that required for the product or process. Basically, when we're talking about technology transfer, usually we're talking about product and process. Yeah. Okay, this is some of the example. Uh, in nineteen uh, this one also is a Korean. Okay, nineteen sixty to nineteen seventy, their goal is to establish a. Production base. They want to be a manufacturer base. They don't want to depend on agriculture. Okay, so they they import the technology. What are the technology that they import? They import the package ah uh, packaging technology, turnkey basic base plants, assembly technology, assembling technology, and so forth. Okay, and in the nineteen eighties, they want to promote ah uh, self reliance. That means depend on their own self. So they what are the characteristic of this ah uh, stage? Is import substitution. That means they. They have local product to substitute their imported uh products. They localize localizations of the part or component productions. That's why the parts that instead of imported from US or UK, they manufacture it locally in Korea. Okay, so their technology they 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 are they are they are they are importing is a unpackaged technology parts. The technology how to produce a part and operational technology. Okay, so these are the some of the example that uh of the technology transfer that. Ah,、uh, Korean has gone through. Okay, and then the in nineteen eighties to nineteen nineties export promotion by means, and in the nineteen eighties they want to have self reliance. That's why they they don't want to import so many things. And in the eighteen eighties to eighteen nineties, ah,、uh, sorry, to nineteen nineties they want to start to export their 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 market. Okay, their、uh, export their products already. Okay, so beginning the plan export and then learning at once and core technology. So the 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 technology transfer is material related technology. So they transfer the material related technology into the country, okay, and and also the control technology. How are they going to control their process, okay? So okay, a successful technology transfer using models will require a technology to be compatible with the strategy of objective of the firm. That means if you want to transfer a technology back to your company or back to your country, the technology must be compatible with your strategy. Okay. If let's say, ah,、uh, this may not happen. I I just pluck from the sky. Give you some example. If let's say the the you are you the government want to increase the the what they say the un ah、uh, want to increase the employment rate, want to reduce the unemployment rate. 
Okay, that's mean the, 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 the government want to create more job opportunities, right? And in your company, you, you are supporting the government initiative to create more job opportunities. But in this case, you go and transfer uh, automation technology to your, to your factory. Instead of running by uh, 100 workers, now we need only 20 workers. So in that case, the technology that you transfer is not compatible or not in line with your strategy. You get me? Okay. So in, in real world, everybody want to cut down the workforce. Lah. Okay. What, uh, just now the, the example may not happen. Yeah. Okay. Technology is complemented by firm specific factors to ensure absorption, adaptation and learning. Okay. So the technology is complemented. Yeah, you have other knowledge also is complementing the technology so that easier for you to absorb and adapt the, uh, the technology. Technology transfer is supported by related and supporting sector and factor. When you transfer a technology, you must be it might be supported by the related uh, sector. For example, if you are transfer a technology for car manufacturing, so the car needs a lot of components, isn't it? They need tire, they need steering wheel, they need wheel, they need whatever. So in your surrounding, you must have the industry that support the, or this technology transfer. If, if, if let's say you, you transfer the car making uh, technology to Malaysia and there is nobody making a uh, steering wheel, nobody making aircon, nobody making tire and so forth, then you need to import all those components again. Then they, 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 there is no worth it. Okay. So your technology transfer must be able to be supported by related and supporting sector and factor. Okay. And we are talking about technology in terms of a business or entrepreneur uh, perspective. So what is the main aim of a business is to make money, isn't it? All right. So the technology that you transfer may, must be able to help you to expand your market or technology transfer is your market oriented. Okay. So it is, uh, 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 it can help you to gain, gain more market to expand your market and so forth. So the product being developed is, a mark, uh, is, uh, acceptable by the market. So technology transfer is market oriented. So these are the criteria that where, where, when we want to transfer the technology, we need to uh, look into all these four factors here. Yeah? Now, this one is a bit lengthy. Very often we, we, we treat technology transfer, we buy some one buy a new equipment from overseas, then we say that we are transfer of technology from overseas. It is not. Technology transfer is not about selling some hardware to a client. Okay, if you just buying some, uh, buying a machine from the from the overseas company, and use it, you it is not considered as technology transfer. Okay, that is only sell selling. Okay, so technology transfer is not about selling some hardware to a client who is then left with the task of using it as he or she deems fit. Okay. Technology transfer is the imparting of knowledge, imparting of knowledge, transfer of knowledge, skill and methodologies involved in the whole production cycle. Technology transfer is a system that encompasses the social and economic fabric of a country where technology has been effectively transferred. There, there should be a visible change from the person to the production system as well as compatibility with the needs in the institutional framework, skills, training, financial capacity, promotion, and active support of an endogenous capacity and appreciations of the natural environment of the recipient country. Technology transfer also has to do with disseminating information on the technology themselves. Okay, very often when we buy something, buy a high-end technology uh, the equipment from overseas, they come here, their, their experts come here, they just teach you how to use it. After that, they they, they say bye bye to you already. Then they left it to you. If, if, if the machine have had any problem that it cannot run, then nobody knows how to repair it. Then you have to depend on the supplier. Then you have to call up the supplier and you will fly in the, the technicians again and then to repair the, 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 the machine the, or the equipment. So this is generally happened in Malaysia. We that is seldom the most of the so-called technology transfer in Malaysia are selling uh, are buying technology only. Okay, it's not a real transfer. A real transfer in uh, including of the imparting imparting of the knowledge, yeah, right. Okay, main elements required for technology transfer. What are the main uh, what are the elements required for technology transfer? The first thing is you must be you must be motivation. You must generating motivation. You must have the urge to 
import the technology to transfer the technology. Okay, if second, it must recognition of current situation and opportunity by acquirers. The recipient must recognize that the current situation is is a, is, is not really good and there is opportunity for you to further improve the situation, to improve the current situation by importing or transfer the technology from the developed country. This one, the acquirer or the recipient must recognize this. If the recipient think that ah, our, our current situation is very good, uh, better than US already, then what is the point for you to transfer the technology from US or UK, right? Since you are so good already, maybe they mean maybe US need to transfer your technology to them, all right? So the first thing first is recognize the current situation where we are and the gap, where can we go to improve? How, how much improvement can we make by technology transfer? Third one is identification of appropriate technologies by entrepreneurs. Okay, which technology you want to uh, transfer? The technology that you transfer must be appropriate to your industry, must be appropriate to your manpower requirement and so forth. For example, if let's say your, your company have uh, 50 workers, okay, and then you 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 you, you transfer a technology that need only 20 per person. So how about the another 30 person and another 30 workers? You are going to retrench them or how? Okay, so it must be appropriate technologies. And also in, in from technical side, in case there is any breakdown or whatever, there is a local talent that can repair it. Okay, so that is appropriate. If for example, let's say like cloning, that, that, that this technology is not in Malaysia yet, right? If let's say one company imported the cloning into Malaysia to clone chicken, in case anything happen, we do not have the expert to tackle the problem. So we still have to go back to US, right? So in that case, this technology is not appropriate, uh, inappropriate for Malaysia, okay? Developing the uh, absorptive capacity, you must develop your, you must be able to absorb the, the, the new technology, okay? Managing the transfer process. How are you going to transfer the process? What are the do and don'ts that during the transferring process? And financing, nothing is free in this world. When you transfer any technology from a developed country, usually you need to pay a lump sum of money to them as a loyalty or whatever, or, 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 or whatever they call. Okay, there is nothing, there is no free technology transfer. Okay, the technology transfer to third world. Actually, uh, in the third world, before we have a technology transfer, there are, our third world has go through the five stages, okay? The first stage is traditional society where, where we are depending uh, very much on agriculture. Okay, we are not uh, industrialized yet, depending on agriculture, uh, heavily depending on the labor work and so forth. Then when the time goes, where we become more advanced, there is a precondition for takeoff. Takeoff here means the takeoff of your industry. Okay, so, so you have a better uh, knowledge on your industry already. So you are ready to move forward. Okay. Then the third stage is move forward. That means you, you, you move forward, go, go full force of your industry and then drive the technology to, uh, you can in, at this takeoff stage, you can import the technology. You can have a technology transfer during takeoff, okay? This one precondition for takeoff is, uh, for example, not only your factory is ready, your society and so forth is ready. For example, your society is uh, very stable. The, the, the unemployment rate of the society is very low, okay? So they are ready to take off for the advanced manufacturing techniques. Yeah, that is the preconditions. And once you take off, once you transfer your technology already, then you need to drive the technological maturity. You need to further develop, as what we mentioned just now, incremental improvement of the technology. Yeah, And once you have improved the technology, you've got the know-how already, then you can have high mass consumption, self-sustaining growth. You can sustain your own self already. You no need to depend on overseas uh, expertise. So these are the five stages of the economy growth. Any question up there? Okay, precondition for takeoff. Just now, as I mentioned, there are many factors that, are, uh, for example, like your unemployment rate is low, society is very stable, and so forth. Okay, so. Precondition for takeoff matured, matured economy based on firm base, where basic needs of society taken care of. When when where basic needs of society is taken care of, what happens if the basic needs of society is not taken care of? What happened to the society? Huh? 
I want someone to try. What happened to the society if the basic needs of society are not taken care of? What people other will struggle. Sorry, what is that? People will struggle. People will what? Struggle. Struggle. Okay, when they struggle, what they do? Yeah. They protest. Protest after protest. Besides protest, what else do? Tell me, just now you are saying something? Yo. Yeah. Huh? R-I-O-T. Sorry, what is that? Yo. Yo. How to spell? R-I-O-T. R-I-O-T. All right, okay. Also, so when, when, when this thing happened, right? And also the people are just now, the first one is what? Huh? People are struggling. So the crime rate will increase, isn't it? People always tend to, 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 to find a way how to meet their basic needs. Can you remember what is a Maslow hierarchy of needs? Anyone remember? There are five levels of uh, muscle hierarchy. The basic need is the food. You need to have food. You need to have shelter. You need to have sex. You need to have you need to have uh, all uh, this uh, house and whatever. Okay. If let's say the basic needs are not uh, are not fulfilled, then they won't go to the second needs called uh, safety. Right. So if the society where the unemployment rate is very high, people cannot, uh, people are starving and so forth. So the crime rate, the robbery, uh, the, the crime rate will increase. So when, when, the, when the, the, the society is having high crime rates, you are not ready to take off. Okay. You are not ready to have technology transfer because you also cannot take care of your own society. What, why you think for a, a high tech technology? All right. So complementary factors of this uh, take precondition for takeoff include health, education, and employment program, as I mentioned just now, discovery and utilization of natural resources, how you use and how you discover your natural resources, need to produce economy growth through quantitative and qualitative investment, investment in infrastructure. Now, when you transfer technology, sometime after you transfer the technology, and it happened in India before, many years back, they transfer one crop, yeah? the seed of uh, one plant into India and then this uh, give a very good harvest. Okay, the, the har harvesting is very good. And uh, India's time when they, uh, they, are, they are very happy with this uh, technology transfer. However, when they during the harvesting, they need to send the plant, the, the, the fruit to other places, they're facing a big problem because they do not have a proper road. Okay, so that's why the infrastructure in India is not uh, ready for that technology transfer. Okay, so when we, when we talk about technology transfer, we don't only think of uh, in, the, in the factory itself. We might expand our, our scope to look at the society as a whole, right? Many third world countries attempt to take shortcut to achieve development, uh, to develop country economy status by means of technology transfer from advanced economy. As I mentioned just now, if you go through the vertical transfer, you need to go through R&D development and then only productions. But if you are going through the uh, technology transfer, you are horizontally transfer your technology. So it saves time and money. Okay, Technology transfer is a two-edged sword. Okay? It, can be, it, it can help you, also it can harm you. So you need to be very, very careful on the technology, uh, uh, technology transfer. Okay? Advantages uh, of technology transfer to recipient country Shorter learning, this one is not, uh, just now what, what we are talking about is, is uh, advantages to recipient, uh, but now this one is to, is bigger scope to recipient country, okay? Shorter learning curve, because you shortcut short your, your, your R&D time, build on not developing existing technology, you of scale resource more efficiently, save on expensive import of essential goods, okay? So these are the benefits to the recipient country. These advantages of, uh, Technology transfer to recipient country, import of inappropriate technology. As I mentioned just now, when you want to import a technology, make sure that it is appropriate. You can support by other factors, okay? Just like the case of the, the, the agriculture sector in India, their, their, their transportation sector is not ready to support the technology that they transfer, okay? So it is important for... Uh, uh, if you let's say you transfer an inappropriate technology, then you are causing more problem than you causing you more harm than goods. Okay, 
So this uh, if you uh, if you are imported an uh, inappropriate technology, that is a disadvantage. Okay, and technology transfer usually is more high cost. You need to pay a high amount of money to the uh, provider. Inability to handle high technology resulting in dependency of, of the owner. Okay, if let's say you 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 import a uh, automation machine, okay, and your technicians or your engineer locally cannot handle this. So whenever there is a problem, you need to call or, or, or email the, the mother's company in overseas. So this indirectly causing you to more you, uh, causing you to be dependent on the provider. Okay, so anything happen to the machine, you need to call the provider. Okay, you need to call the donor. So indirectly you are creating resulting in a dependency of the donor. Okay, and social cost. Usually when we improve our process nowadays is we, least, uh, we need less people to work on it, okay? So in this case, the social cost, unemployment, high national debt, because sometimes the, if, if the country want to import a technology, they don't have sufficient money, they need to borrow money from World Bank and so forth. So this may cause a higher national debt, okay? Loss of indigenous innovation, culture, increased rich, poor debt. So the, all, these, the, the, all these are called social costs, okay? Your original asli, uh, uh, technology or, or your, 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 your this uh, indigenous uh, innovation may be disappear because now people are using high technology, okay, or your culture may be disappear also, right? Increase uh, rich and the, the rich will become richer because they, they, they can afford to, to buy the technology or they can afford to, to de develop a new technology, but the poor become poorer. So in that case, the rich and poor gap become bigger and bigger, right? So these are the disadvantages of technology transfer to recipient country, uh, not provide, not donor country or providing country. Uh. Technology does not match local expertise and not supported by local industry. This will cause you to have, uh, this is cause you to, in, to, to, have, to import an uh, inappropriate technology. Uh. Result or after you import a technology, you find that the result does not match with the expectation, especially for export-based industry. At first you thought that the machine A is very good, you can use to uh, produce product A, and then export to UK. Who's know when the uh, when the machine A reach your place after you set up, you find that the quality of the product produced by machine A is not as up as good as what you expected. Okay, and then uh, the other country may not want to buy you know, the products from you because the quality is not up to their expectations. Yeah. Okay, and it may also upset the social norm or culture. It may change our culture, upset our social uh, normative. Okay. Key issues in technology transfer to third world country. Okay, what are the key issues if we transfer the technology to third world country from the developed country? First is the nature of relationship between developed and developing country. Okay, what are, are they in good terms? Are these two countries in good terms or are these two, uh, let, let's say like, let's say like you, in, the, in the US and China, their relationship at this moment of time is not really good, isn't it? Right? So if let's say the relationship is not really good, do you think that the technology transfer will take place? It may not. Okay, so the nature of relationship between the developed and developing country, how is it? Full assessment of implication for developing country when the new technology accepted, implemented. The developing country, the recipient country must have a full assessment to, to, to assess what will happen once we implement or once we use a new technology. Now, who developed the technology? The advanced country is the, the developed country, right? First world country. Why they develop the technology? They develop technology because they are facing some problem. So that's why they develop the technology to help them to solve the problem. Okay, now the technology is meant to solve the problem faced by the developed country. So now we are in the developing country. When we import this technology to our country, does the technology also solve the, solve the problem faced by our country or not? So we need to have a, a full assessment on that, the implication, okay? Critical, because the technology originally is not meant for the developing country, it's developed for their own self, okay? Critical examination of the assumption of environmentally sound technology. You need to, you need to uh, examine the, the, the assumptions critically. Sorry. Oh. 
Okay, we are here, right? Okay, next, technology transfer is a gift or Trojan house. In the real, uh, in the real cost consideration, when we want to consider the technology transfer, we need to think of amount paid upfront. How much are we going to pay after we paying the money? Is there any any advantages for us in the market or not? Whether the product is uh, produced by the technology is acceptable by the product? Any consideration of the licensing or loyalty? Sometimes when you transfer the uh, the technology from a uh, from the de developed country, they may say, okay, you need to give me a licensing fees. Okay, one year, how many thousand? How many? How many? How many thousand of uh, licensing fees or loyalty? And then you need to pay for maybe fifteen to twenty years. Every year you pay for it. So is it worth it? Because all these are the real costs that you need to consider. And other and any other non-economy consideration. Is there any other non-economy things that you are you are not consider? So after you add up all this A B C D, you will find that technology transfer actually costs you a lot of money. Okay, so factor to be considered before you start to import or before you start to transfer the technology back to your country or your your or your, your factory. Okay, what are the factors that you need to be considered? First thing first, appropriateness of technology as what we just now we say. If you import uh, inappropriate uh, technology, it will cost more harm than good, okay? So the, the, the technology that you transfer must be appropriate. Appropriate in the sense that there is a local support for the technology. Your, your technicians or your engineers know how to deal with the technology, okay? B, what is the cost of technology? As what we mentioned just now, the loyalty fees or the, the, the licensing fees or whatever, and then the cost of building the, 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 the machine or whatever. So what are the costs of technology transfer? Ability to handle the technology. Most of the time that we face problem with this one, we thought that we know about the technology, but when the technology having problem go haywire, we, we only realize that we are not able to handle the technology. We only realize that we are, we are not able to prepare the technology. Okay? So this, you need to be uh, make sure that you have a talent, you have the manpower to handle the technology. Yeah? Especially if your technology is inappropriateness of technology, okay. Compatibility of social cultural system. The technology that you import, it must be compatible with social cultural system, because there are certain cultural uh, there are, there are certain cultural uh, they have their own belief and so forth. Sorry, uh, give me a minute. Hello. Up there? Ah. Uh. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, you got lobby gun. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, sorry, give me a minute, sir. Okay, so one of the examples is Papua New Guinea, this country. Have you heard about Papua New Guinea? They no, transfer sir. technology back to the country, okay? That is a called biogas uh, bio uh, system, where they use uh, excrement of uh, animals or human beings to convert them into energy, into power, okay? They, after they import the, the, the technology to their country, the technology works very well, okay, no problem. But they forgot about one thing. They forgot that the uh, Papua New Guinea uh, people have a belief that they should not use any excrement from other people or other culture for, the, for, for this purpose. So in that case, if they, they believe that uh, the, the, the excrement of the animals cannot be used, 
So where hardware are they going to get the raw material for this uh, biogas? Right? So the whole system failed because of the social cultural system. Same thing in Malaysia, if you are manufacturing, if you are in, importing a, a technology for manufacturing food manufacturing or whatever, and you targeted at the Islamic or Muslim Muslim market, then you must make sure that the, the your the technology is halal, isn't it? Right? If it is not halal, then, then you cannot sell it to the Muslim customer. So compatibility of social cultural system is very important. And also whether there is any other hidden cost that uh, you, you didn't see or not. Other hidden costs, for example, like just now we're talking about India, the you need to develop a road, the transportation is having problem and so forth. Okay. So these are the five factors that you need to consider before you transfer the technology. Additional issue to be considered, identify, cultivate, strengthen and disseminate environmentally sound and innovative technology processes. Okay. Protection of intellectual properties right from the traditional knowledge wisdom. Now, sometimes when you transfer the technology back, they involve intellectual properties, the copyright. Okay, so in that case, you may highly likely you need to pay the licensing fees to them. Yeah, protect genetic heritage of developing uh, nations, biodiversity, understand social and cultural cultural context. Uh, the all this one is same as what we say the social cultural uh, issue that face like Papua New Guinea. Okay, effect of new technology. What is the effect of new technology on the society? Extent of existing economy activities process displayed by the new technology. Okay, it expand the, the existing economy activity because your new technology, you, you, your productiv productivity is higher or whatever. Okay, so it expand the economy activity. Extent of disruption of existing pattern of labor or contributions to structural and employment urbanizations. As what we mentioned just now, most of the technology we transfer is related to automation or whatever. This will disrupt or causing the, uh, the disturbance to the pattern of labor, okay? The, the unemployment rate may be go up also. Impact on local and indigenous culture, values, and social organizations. Okay, since you are importing the, the, the technology from overseas, in that sometimes you may also bring together with their culture and so forth. So there is an impact, negative impact on our local and indigenous uh, culture or our value. So shift in patterns of consumption, especially uh, towards product or process affecting the environment. There is a shift in the patterns of the consumption also. That it may affect the environment. Environmental impact assessment. You need to assess also how does this technology impact our environment. Okay, Is it producing more pollutants or it is a green technology? Okay, next we're talking about impact of technology on the society. There are four categories of technological innovations. Uh, we get it from a free man, it's called free man's model. The, the first one is incremental, radical, chain of technology system, and technological revolution. What are they? Let's look at it. Incremental. Incremental means occur continuously, as what I mean by Kaizen just now. Okay, outcome or experience, quality circle, problem solving, product improvement. How many of you have heard about quality circle? Anyone know what is quality circle? Not quite. Have you taken this paper uh, called Quality and Reliability Engineering? Ah? Oh, wow. Hey, I thought it's one of your paper, no? Ah? No. Wow. Okay, quality circle again is, uh, is from Japan. For your information, uh, a lot of quality tools are uh, actually developed in Japan. Okay, just tell you the uh, story. Uh, during the Second World War, the uh, Japanese Kala, isn't it? Right, because of the hydrogen bomb by the US. So, and then at that time, Japanese economy is in the trouble. Okay, is is in a very bad shape. And America, as, as a Taiko, want to help out the uh, Japanese to rebuild their country. Okay, so they send an, uh, they send an expert to, to, to Japan to teach them about the quality, uh, quality techniques. Okay, and this gentleman, in this gentleman's theory or concept in, 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 U, in the US is not well received. Okay, nobody wants to listen to him. So they send him to, to, to Japan. They send someone that nobody wants to listen. To him, one to Japan, and Japanese they are so obedient, they are so disciplined. 
they follow exactly what this gentleman taught them. Okay, and from there their their quality become better and better. Do you do, do, do you see the quality of a Casio watch or, or, or any Japanese product today? Is the quality good or no good? The quality is very good, isn't it? Right? So this is because of the this gentleman taught them how to manage their quality and how to check their quality. And this man is called Edward Deming. Have you heard about Deming? Also no. Okay, never mind. So he had taught them a lot of this quality technique and so forth. And Quality Circle is a group of uh, workers, okay, where they, five or six workers, where they group together to, for meeting after work. Okay, after work, the keyword is after work. Uh. During work, during working hours, they perform their, uh, their, their normal tasks. So after work, they stay back and discuss about the problem they face during the uh, working hours and try to brainstorm what is the solutions. This is called quality circles. And the unique things about quality circle is these five or six workers gather together uh, after work, they do not claim overtime. Okay, in Malaysia, if you ask you to stay back for one hour, you say, I claim overtime for one hour. This one, they stay back voluntarily without claiming overtime, and there is no superior inside there. Okay, so because as a human being, sometimes it's superior or our boss is inside there, uh, the way we speak is different, isn't it? There are certain things that we, we, we are worrying, we cause problems that we dare not speak out. So in this quality circle, there is no superior there. All the participants are the same rank, so they can talk about whatever they want to say, okay? And this is a, a, a very good culture in Japan. Many, many companies are uh, implementing this. In Malaysia, last time, uh, Motorola was implementing quality circle. Now, I'm not sure. And in Japan, there are some company, beside the, 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 the people staying back after work to do the brainstorming for, as a quality circle, they also have a Kaizen day or quality circle day, where during that day, their operation all shut down, all employees are sitting at the hall there, listening to all those quality circle group presenting about their findings, about their invention or about their problem solving technique and so forth. Okay, and then they choose who is the best, who is the best one or who is the runner up and so forth. And one interesting question, I have seen one. If you're getting an award, when you go up to you go to the stage and presented your idea that you discussed during quality circle, you get an award. Say that you are there. There are three awards. Okay, you get the first prize. What do you think? What 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 prize will you get in Japan? Can someone have a try? Participation award. Sorry, what is that? Participation. Participation? Award. Are you talking about participation? Yeah. Is it an award? Award means a present. What present do you will you get? A ribbon. Sorry? A ribbon. What what is that? A ribbon. A ribbon? R-I-B-B-O-N. Ribbon. Yeah. Okay, they get a ribbon. For what purpose? For participating. Okay, right. It's quite near to that. In Malaysia, if let's say our ideas were selected as the best idea or whatever, we are expecting a huge monetary award. For example, uh, 1,000 ringgit or whatever. Right? But in Japan, they are the, the quality circles that are selected as the, the best uh, group. They only each or each of the member only get one piece of cake. Okay, they get zero cents. Yeah. So this is a culture, the, the different culture in Malaysia and uh, and Japan. In Malaysia, if let's say you give fifty ringgit, they also say uh, you look down on my idea. My idea only worth fifty ringgit. They don't they don't they don't feel happy about it. Okay. So this quality circle is from Japan, yeah. So uh, because they every day they stay not every day like what, what, a few times per week they stay back and discuss about the problem that they face. So that's why they can have a continuous improvement, yeah. So incremental every day or every week improve a little bit. So after one year, then you can see a huge improvement. So the next one is radical. 
Radical is an exceptional event, usually based on research, go through the this uh, uh, vertical vertical transfer way, uh, usually based on research dramatic effect on the society. The example is the development of plastic, birth control pills, and so forth. This one, they have gone through the, the vertical uh, development plan from the, uh, what is that? Uh? Research, develop, and then productions, okay? Along a, a big jump. So the example of this uh, radical chain is the invention of plastic, yeah, or birth control pills. Then another, another two is chain of the technology system, usually the result of several related radical innovations giving birth to new technology systems such as plastic and injection molding that we have mentioned about the sound. Okay. Usually the result of several related radical innovation give birth to a new technology. Yeah. If we have a plastic, we have an injection molding, then now we have a plastic injection molding. Okay, the, third, uh, the fourth one, technological revolution. This is a major technological innovation with major impact on economy and society, giving rise to new basis capabilities and skill. So these are the uh, category or uh, type of uh, uh, technology, okay, proposed by Freeman. Now, technology transfer, as I mentioned just now, is a double-edged sword, right? It can be it, 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 it can it can be a uh, good, it can be bad, okay. But at the same time, if let's say we accept or reject a technology without a proper understanding, it's also causing more harm than good, okay. If we reject technology without understanding, this one we call oppressions. If we accept the technology without understanding what it is, uh, what is inferred and so forth, it's called dominate uh, dominations, yeah. Important to both understanding and to understand and use technology effectively. If we want to transfer a technology back, we must understand the technology and how can we use the technology effectively, okay? And social acceptance, whether this technology is accepted by the NGOs or not. Well, if sometimes the technology that we import or transfer to Malaysia may produce uh, pollutants or, or may produce some harmful chemicals that that no good for the society or whatever, then the NGO will, will, will object about the, uh, this technology, right? So whether the society, whether we can accept this technology or not, and legal, whether the law to regulate this technology advances uh, research or at least implementation, is there any law that uh, govern the, uh, or regulate the technological advancement or not? Uh, these are the factors that we need to think of. Okay. All right. Up to here, any question? Okay. If no question, I don't want to go into this nine element because it, I prefer to do it in the in, in the same lecture, so I will end the class now. We are we are going to discuss about the nine element to examine the technology next uh, next Tuesday. Oh, oh yes, sorry next Tuesday there is no class ah. Twenty third of February Tuesday there is no class. Okay, uh, who is the course rep? Um yeah I'm course rep for R E E. Uh, ain't not Po Ching Wen ah? I thought it's Po Ching Wen. Ching Wen is R T E. Oh, but all all the group who is there any one rep for represent all the three programs? Uh, Jie, I think you take the position. Sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can. Why today when your speak is so soft ah? Okay, right. who, 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 who can take care of the whole the whole group? Any suggestions? Chie. Chie. Okay, Yong Chie. Yes, sir. Okay, can you discuss with the other group leaders, okay, when can we have a replacement class for, this, for next Tuesday? Okay. So next Tuesday, no class, yeah? No, I'm on leave. So you discuss, and then after that, you text me. Uh, give me a few a few slots, yeah, uh, sure. a few proposals, yeah? Sure, okay? Sure. Yeah. All right, okay. Now, before we end the class, any question? Your assignment okay or not? Changi, have you checked the, the link that you sent to me? Uh? Yes, sir. You checked already, uh? yeah? We will discuss it later. Uh. Okay, okay, right. 
Okay, if no question, then we end the class here. Thank you, class. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.